This is the car we've been hoping would exist for years. It is the Porsche Cayman GT4 RS, the harder cord version of what was the sportiest Cayman that money could buy. But now, now, it's a proper junior 911 GT3. Here's the numbers. It's four litre naturally aspirated flat six that you may recognize from the GT3 can rev up to 9,000 RPM and produces 493 brake horsepower and 332 pounds-feet of torque. That's a respective bump of 79 horsepower and 15 pounds-feet over the GT4. That power is sent to the rear wheels by a seven-speed PDK gearbox, no manuals here, and Paul says it'll be good for a 3.4 second 0 to 62 sprint, topping out at nearly 200 miles an hour. While these are all very impressive numbers, what's more impressive is how this car stays glued to the road via these front wheel arch vents, via the manually adjustable front diffuser, which is done by waggling your hand around inside that front wheel arch, all the underbody aero, the rear diffuser, and of course, the big rear wing. As a result, this car produces around 20% more downforce than the standard GT4 when both cars are in their maximum attack track settings. And crucially, it does it without any penalty in drag. The job here is to lap harder and faster than anything else out there. That means there's an RS only shock setup and its own bespoke spring and anti roll bar rates. Porsche's also used ball joints to keep the chassis tight to the body, making sure the car is as stiff as possible. This is an RS car, which means it is the peak of Porsche engineering nerdery, which means there can be no compromise when it comes to saving weight. So in the back, you have extra thin Gorilla Glass. You have a titanium roll cage, which is part of the Visac pack. You have lighter door cards. You have fabric door pulls. You have storage nets here instead of traditional storage compartments, and you have less insulation. The sum total of all that means it is 35 kilograms lighter than a PDK equipped GT4 which means it's 20 kilograms lighter than a PDK equipped GT3 and just three kilograms lighter than a manual GT3. All of those headline figures mean the GT4 RS can lap the Nürburgring in just seven minutes, 4.511 seconds, over 23 seconds quicker than the standard GT4 and just six seconds slower than a GT3. Admittedly, that was done with pro driver Jörg Bergmeister at the wheel and on a set of super sticky Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2Rs, which are available as an option, by the way, but still impressive. Power, torque, weight, lap times, we know all of that, but how will the layman, the casual car fan, be able to tell the GT4 RS apart from the GT4? Well, I'll show you. The GT4, by comparison, as you can see, is fairly clean at the front end, whereas here it's maximum aggression. You've got the contrast colored carbon fiber bonnet, of course, but also these knacker ducts, which feed air straight to the brakes. And then these air curtains, which smooth the airflow down the side of the car. Around the back, the most obvious difference is the massive rear wing with its swan neck mounts and aluminum supports. Now this can be adjusted manually via four settings for varying angles of attack. But if you adjust this, you must also manually adjust the front diffuser to keep the overall aero balance of the car just so. And look, it's not just bigger than this wing over here. It's a lot bigger, isn't it? And that's because it's modeled around the 911 RSR GT race car and of course the 911 GT3. What else can I show you? Well, down here we have these twin exhaust pipes, same as the GT4, but these are more elaborate. These are titanium tipped, which is part of the Visac pack. The diffusers, by the way, are pretty much identical, save for these extra little winglets along the side here. And while we have the cars together, let's put the stats up. Question is, how has Porsche made the GT4 RS so much quicker than the GT4? And more importantly, why? Well, there's no better person to ask than the man behind all of Porsche's GT cars, Andreas Preuninger. So I've got a few questions for you, and the first one is a big one, all right? So why did you give the Cayman the RS treatment? Was it because your customers weren't satisfied with the GT4, or maybe are you hinting that 
I don't know, electric Caymans are coming and you want to make the most of naturally aspirated engines while you still can? Well, uh, Jack, like always in life, not, not everything is black and white. So um, all of the mentioned uh, um, reasons mm -hmm. were part of the mixture. Okay. We have to say the first time we bought out a 981 GT4, the first of its kind, it yeah. was such a huge success. But everybody kept uh, asking, why don't you put something even bigger in this mid-engine platform? And, and the last for an RS version on the GT4 was already there on the last generation. Mm -hmm. That's for one. So it was really something um, we acknowledged from the customer base. But we as engineers and um, as uh, people that are always uh, uh, wanting to climb up the ladder one step more. Um, we always had that in our back of our minds uh, to do something like that. On the second gen, uh, we already planned that. And, uh, and you're right, yes, the future of the mid-engine platform um, might have to do a lot with electricity. And um, so it's high time uh, to, um, to have a big party on the platform of the 718 with a atmospherical, normally aspirated engine with 9,000 RPM. This car is a live concert on four wheels. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's such an entertainer. And um, it was such a fun project to make a fun car. Mm. And that was something that came from our hearts and we wanted to do it a long time. Now we have the slot and the cycle plan to do it. And uh, it fits the GT cycle plan very well, the CT model line. We have the GT3 a little bit uh, mm -hmm. more positioned uh, on top. Then we have the GT4 as a smaller brother and this car is in between. Yeah. Well, that's interesting you mentioned the GT3 there because how, uh, how is this car, describe how it's sort of sufficiently different to a GT3 because on paper, quite similar prices. This is sli slightly less. Sim it's slightly, it's, it's yeah, less. Slightly yeah. less. Yeah. Uh, weight, it's, it's slightly less, but only 20 kilograms with the, with the PDK box. Um, and, and power, it's got GT3 engines. So tell us about the difference in character and how these cars can actually sit next to each other. Um, I think they will sit next to, next to each other in a lot of garages. Mm -hmm. um, it's for, for, for the, the GT3 is our, is our um, product um, that always has this um, huge competition around it internally and mostly externally. Everybody's trying to match the GT3's status, mm -hmm. match the GT3's value package, match the GT3's performance on the track. And so we are very eager to give the GT3 everything we can to let it stay on pole position, like we did now with a double wishbone front axle. Sure. It has rear axle steering. It, all, it has all these gizmos that mm -hmm. makes the car really fast. It has this advantage, uh, I would say, of having the engine in the back mm -hmm. um, with a short exhaust uh, that uh, has not so much back pressure. But this big wide wheels that we use on the track and um, it has all this uh, high performance stuff and still is a driver's car. But it's a 911. It's a typical 911. The GT3 is a the, 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 the essence of all the virtues a 911 stands for. This is the mid-engine car. It's a little brother, yeah. I think it's positioned a little bit lower than the GT3, so it's at least in euros, it's 30,000 euros difference, so that's not slightly, that's quite, okay. a, quite a lot. And um, on that car, I don't think we have too much competition around in the field. Huh? Maybe the GT4, but this one is almost 24 seconds quicker around the ring mm -hmm. uh, in this configuration. So it stands for its own. And we didn't look too much into super aero and uh, the last eke out, the last tenth of a second on the track. RS normally means rent sport, racing. And um, in German, it's better to be, uh, to, be to, to be translated. It's RS, it's Renn Spaß, which means Renn Fun, uh, racing fun. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit of a hybrid between a driver's car that you use on a mountainous roads, on, on, on switchbacks and on, 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 on really demanding roads for the driver, which you have a lot of fun driving the car just for the sake of driving, mm -hmm. old school driving vibes and a great car for track days. We tried to find the perfect compromise here and I think we did because from the emotional point of view, this is a complete different experience because on a GT3, for example, if you're talking about sound, and sound is very, very important for our customers and for ourselves too, mm -hmm. the GT3 sound is, is dominated by the exhaust. This one's dominated mainly by the intake. <laughs> which gives a complete different atmosphere and uh, makes the driving from the acoustics completely different, which is important, but it has a mid-engine uh, configuration. Sure. So the high axis turnaround uh, willingness, I would say, um, it doesn't need a rear axle uh, steering mm -hmm. uh, for that. So the whole mid-engine feeling yeah, 
is, is, is very, very much uh, noticeable in that car. Is this a more hardcore model? If you drove them on a the track, would it be trickier to extract the maximum potential from this than to extract the maximum potential from the GT3? That's, I think this is something that has to be decided individually. individually. Sure, I mean, sure. our race drivers drive the same car um, with, at the, with the same track and lap times with a completely different setup. So yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's what you're used to, it's what you, what you have in your, in your veins yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Um, okay. it, is, it is not hard to drive. Yeah. It is mid-engine, so it is at the, at the very, very edge, a little bit more snappy, which mm -hmm. is normal. It is definitely a lot more hardcore than the GT4, sure. which we see over there, sure. because we've got different, different suspension. We've got a little bit more aero. We've got at least 80 horsepower more, and mm -hmm. this 500 horsepower is very conservative. Yeah. And so I, w I would say it's more hardcore. Is it more hardcore than a GT3? Yes, in a way, because it's way louder in the interior. I mean, we're matching all the worldwide criteria for external noise, but in mm. the interior, this is such an entertainer. It's like, it's like the Robbie Williams. Yeah. Let me entertain you. This is what this car is about. <laughs> the Robbie Williams of Porsche. And <laughs> it's interesting because you mentioned the intake there. But if you can take us around the most important bits that make this an RS, not mm -hmm. just a GT4. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the intake. A Do we have ago. so much time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. Let's look. start right where you're standing. Um, I just described the acoustical differences uh, that we have to in, in, in comparison with GT3 and on the GT4 as well. And that is, then there's a reason for that. It's not only the engine being a GT3 engine, which people might think that must sound same or similar. Mm -hmm. It does not because we're taking the intake um, charge from here. So the intake port for the process air. So the air that enters the, uh, sure. the engine for combustion, um, we threw, away, threw out the window and um, here are ducts yeah, that lead mm. to an air filter element, to a big air box, which you can see well, let's, actually. Let's, can, can we pop the lid? Yeah, can sure, we, we, we can pop the lid and show you. You see this carbon fiber mm -hmm. um, air box here and you see the runners that come directly from the, from the rear sided uh, yeah. intakes where normally the windows sit. Mm -hmm. And um, all the intakes, uh, intake uh, is coming over here. The air filter element, which is a race filter down there. It's not a paper filter, mm -hmm. it's a oil waxed um, cloth filter. Yep. Uh, very high quality and uh, very less uh, back, uh, back pressure. Um, so we have here the intake system that goes straight down to the engine. The engine is mounted directly underneath here. Mm -hmm. And the only difference actually to the GT3 engine is the intake, the upper intake part, because we had to turn around the throttle body mm -hmm. uh, to a horizontal position uh, to be able to match, uh, to get the air in on a GT3. It's 90 degrees uh, to the other that's side. The only that's the only difference. Wow. And the exhaust. I mean, yeah. the, the, the engine is mounted in the middle, so we need a little bit of a longer exhaust because we have to go through the drive shafts mm -hmm. and there's a longer uh, travel uh, to the back. Speaking of the exhaust. So I, uh, Titanium I, end tips. Uh, yes. This so is Weissach package. Yeah. Do I recognize from the 935? Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, the 935 stole this idea from historical cars. Mm -hmm. We stole it from the 935, which mm -hmm. was uh, done by uh, uh, roughly the same people. And we wanted uh, to have a nicer looking exhaust than the one on the GT4. You should really definitely see yep. this is the RS, even if you're, if you're behind. And it's, and it's lighter. And, and are these going to glow interesting colors? When um, get depends on your driving style. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, and titanium normally uh, gets this bluish note. So all yep. the cars we are testing, mm -hmm. and there's cars with 100K miles and more, mm -hmm. they're uh, in the first, let's say, almost an inch, they're blue. Yeah. 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 which looks fab fabulous yeah. and, you and which matches the wheels actually. Yeah, there we yeah. go, go for the blue wheels to match the blue exhaust. In the status. Um, uh, and you mentioned the, the Visac pack there, so what, what, what does that add? It sounds like, I, I've been looking around the car, it, kind of a must-have option to get, to get the maximum out of it. So, so the exhaust tips and what else? Weissach package we introduced first on the GT2 RS and mm. we had a take rate of about uh, s uh, staggering 90% or more. Yeah. Uh, so we decided um, every RS model needs a Weissach package and it consists of uh, similar ingredients. Uh, the recipe Weissach package is mostly lightweight and mm -hmm. we like to show off the carbon. So we see the carbon fiber um, front hood or bonnet in yes. English, I think. Bonnet, we'll go with the bonnet. The bonnet, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can have it as well. And maybe you remember the, um, the, the color scheme of the GT2 RS, mm -hmm. um, which had this uh, colored uh, stripe along the, um, the front hood. You so can have that too. Okay. Looks more sophisticated. It's a, it's a special option. Mm -hmm. um, 
I will show the world on my car <laughs> as soon as I'm allowed to. Mm -hmm. This one's uh, got the got the normal got the normal uh, coloration. And would that stripe match the and paint, this or is it's any color you want? This, the, yeah, in the in the color that uh, that your exterior yeah. color yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, Otherwise, sure. it looks like uh, like a clown. <laughs> so we don't want to have that. We have this uh, we have this carbon fiber um, bonnet on the Weissach mm -hmm. as a visual carbon fiber. All the cars have carbon fiber bonnets, so it's sure. just painted. Mm -hmm. Magnesium rims. Mm -hmm. So these are very lightweight magnesium rims. Um, if you don't have the Weissach package, you got forged aluminum ones. Mm -hmm. um, but the weight difference is substantial, uh, as, as you might know. Mm -hmm. And uh, another t another bit is, if you look at the interior, we have a race tax covered upper part of the ah, dashboard, yeah. uh, which looks very very cool and uh, very racy and um, also very classic. Nine three five. Also 935, yeah. So um, there's technology transfer between, between race and road. Yeah, yeah. That's what uh, Porsche stands for. Sure. And uh, another bit of the Weissach package is this hood that you see here, the mm -hmm. scoop. Yeah. Uh, the normal version doesn't feature the scoop here, and the scoop mirrors the optic of this. What does it do? A little bit more pressure, a little bit more RAM mm -hmm. effect. It's not much. It looks nice. Does it have more? Um, and it sounds different because mm -hmm. you've got here a chamber that is um, yeah, changing the intake sound um, to the better. And I, I <laughs> that is louder a little bit. I can't help noticing how close this intake is to your left when ear. When we sit when inside, it's 30 centimeters. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. you hear everything. You hear such a symphony of different frequencies, mm -hmm. and it depends on the revs and on your load. Mm -hmm. This is so entertaining. This car really tells you stories all the time when you're driving. Thin glass, mm -hmm. gorilla glass, mm -hmm. carbon fiber wing, that is visual carbon fiber, mm -hmm. titanium uh, end tips, mm -hmm. and um, stabilizers in uh, carbon fiber. Yeah. And what else on the interior? I'm, test I'm you, testing you now. You got the, uh, <laughs> you got the badges and the, and the, and the, and the emblems, as a, as a, as a yes, matter of okay, fact. Yes, on the headrest. Yeah, yeah and yeah. Um, yeah, that, that, that rounds it up. Okay, so while we're looking at the driver's seat, there's one other thing. Isn't there a special mode? It adds downforce um, and... Uh, um, we, have, we, have, we have a sport mode, which uh, yeah. makes the PDK shift mm -hmm. uh, yeah. more directly, more mm -hmm. brutally, I would mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for racetrack use. Mm -hmm. We can influence the dampers mm -hmm. from, let's say, the Nürburgring Nordschleife mm -hmm. setup, which is default. No, it's not a comfort default. It's, it's, it's what you use on the street, mm -hmm. especially on B roads in England. And, um, and, we have, uh, and, and we have the uh, little bit tauter um, chrome pre-track setting, I would say, that you, that you uh, would use on maybe Silverstone to make the car even a little bit more stiff and uh, control the body movements even a little bit more. And taking away a little bit of the freedom to travel over the wheels, which you don't need when it's flat, but um, matter of taste. I always run it in a notch life, uh, mm -hmm. in a notch life setup because that's where it's set up originally. And, uh, this works pretty good. Even for your street. commute? Yeah, I'm, uh, I mean, commute, I mean, this is definitely not the car that you buy if you have to go from, now it's talk in English terms, from London to Glasgow yeah, once yeah, a week. Yeah. This is stupid. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is your motorcycle. Yeah, when you weekends. want to drive a motorcycle and you leave the motorcycle and you take, you'd rather take this. This is for yeah. the sake of driving and uh, yeah, for having fun in the car. Okay, and I can't help noticing your there's uh, many options for this car, but you're wearing one on your wrist. So we should talk about this. And I can even take it without, with me with, uh, without entering the, uh, the garage. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is the, the, a new watch that uh, mm -hmm. we brought out that this goes along with the car. It bears the same VIN number than the car that you can only order that when you, when you, when you order the car. Yes. And uh, it features uh, an automatic movement with a rotor um, that is... Uh, and the rotor here. So Blue rotor to match blue the, rotor blue, to match to the, the wheel, so the you get wheels. exactly a spec that you yeah. have on your car. If you, if you have a gray car, you get a gray circle here. If you get a yellow car, mm -hmm. this is yellow. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much, um, pretty much customizable. Yeah. yeah. There we are. Look at yourself. Look at this. And um, you can wear it for the day. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> right. Leg it. So. There we go. I, look, this is a step above. And now the big question, the final question. How do I get myself on the uh, waiting list for one of these? Because the competition for these cars is hot. Um, I think that would be that, that could be a discussion uh, mm -hmm. that is that is coming because uh, it's not limited. It's not yeah, a limited yeah, sure. car. So and we're gonna have a have a production run of at least two two and a half years on that one. Mm -hmm. So uh, there'll be plenty of cars coming around. I mean, I remember when we first introduced the 718 Spider and the GT4. Everybody was uh, crying. Oh, I didn't get a car. I didn't get. Mm -hmm. Mostly everybody has one now. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe it takes some 
yeah, some, some, some patience yeah, sure. before we are able to build it, but we are preparing uh, that we uh, can build enough cars so we're not uh, deliberately short and make, make a shortage out of these cars. We're just producing as many as we can. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it is uh, realistic that this car will find a lot of uh, lovers out there that want to have one. This is uh, true and we're trying the best to, to cover it all. Especially when we actually have a go at driving it. Absolutely. Which I hope is soon. Yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, driving that thing is really, is really um, something I'm looking forward to when all the journalists drive the car because everybody of you will come back with a, with a, with a, with a, with a mad grin on the face and ask me, are you mad? Yeah? <laughs> because this is, this, is the, this is the notion that you get when you drive the car in 2022 um, to make a car that emotional and that mm -hmm. entertaining as this one. So we need, to, we need to enjoy it while we can. Absolutely. Just one more question. How much is it? Well, this will set you back about 141,000 euros, which translates to about 120,000 pounds, which is a decent chunk cheaper actually than the 911 GT3. So where would your money go? If it's on a GT4 RS, may I recommend you get on the blower straight away because they're aiming to start deliveries of this thing before the end of this year. And trust me, it's gonna be a special, special thing.